way to the south. We enter Balham through the verdant grasslands of Battersea Park. And at once we are aware that here is a land of happy, contented people who go about their daily tasks in truly democratic spirit. This is busy High Street, focal point of the town's activity. Note the quaint old stores whose frontage is covered with hand-painted inscriptions, every one a rare example of native Balham art. Let us read some of them as our camera travels past. Cooking up those choice eaters. A song to remember at the Tantamount Cinema. A soup to remember at Montague Moth. Promotions conducted with decorum and taste. Friday night, bring your own paper. Rally Thursday, Barclay Square. Viscountess Lewisham and Mrs. Gerald Blake. Up the ruling classes. This shows the manifold activities of Balham's thriving community. But in quiet corners, we still find examples of the exquisite workmanship that Balham craftsmen have made world famous. Toothbrush holesmanship. On my porch, I carve the little holes in the top of toothbrushes. It is exciting work, and my forefathers have been engaged upon it since 1957. <coughs> the little holes in the top are put in manually, or in other words, once a year. I recently had the honor of demonstrating my craft before the only of us. He stopped by one day for a couple of words. I did not understand either of them. So much for Balham's industries. Now let us see a little more of the town. Here is the great park covering nearly half an acre. This is where the children traditionally meet by the limpid waters of the old drinking fountain. A drinking fountain that has for countless years across the vast aeons of time given untold pleasure to man, woman, and child. Beside this fountain, donated by able counselor Quills as long ago as 1928, the little ones sit around a trim nursemaid and listen spellbound and enchanted as she reads them a story. With one bound, he was by her side. Nora felt his hot breath on her cheek as he ripped the thin silk from... We are now entering old Balham. Time has passed by this remote corner. So shall we. But Balham is not neglecting the cultural side. This is Eugene Quills, whose weekly recitals are attended by a vast concord of people. He has never had a lesson in his life. Such is the enthusiasm of Balham's music lovers that they are subscribing to a fund to send Eugene to Italy or Vienna or anywhere. Night falls on Balham. From Quill's Folly, Balham's famous beauty spot, which stands nearly 10 feet above sea level, the town is spread below us in a fairyland of glittering lights, changing all the time. Green, amber, red, red and amber, and back to green. The nightlife is awakening. The El Morocco Tea Room. What do you want? Pilchards. They're off, dear. Oh, baked beans? Off. Oh, meat, meatloaf salad? That's off, too. A pot of tea? No tea, dear. Or just milk, then? Milk's off. A roll and butter, then? No butter, dear. Oh, just a roll. Only bread, love. I might have just as well have stayed at home. Well, I don't know. It does you good to have a fling occasionally. <laughs> And so the long night draws on. The last stragglers make their way home, and the lights go out one by one as dawn approaches and the bell of St. Quill's Parish Church tolls ten o'clock. Balham sleeps. And so we say farewell to this historic borough with many pleasant memories. And the words of C. Quill Smith, Balham's own bard, burning in our ears. Broad-bosomed, bold, becalmed, benign, lies Belham, 
four square on the northern line. Matched by no marble save in eastern scene, a rose-red city half as gold as green. By country churchyard, ferny fen and mere, what quills mute inglorious lies buried here? Oh, stands the church clock at ten to three, and is there honey still for tea? Honey's off, dear. <laughs>